by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, you see. Ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, Israel. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. I told you, you gonna see it. The destruction decreed shall overflow with righteousness. Your salvation happens at the same time they're being destroyed. Ain't that awesome? Wow. Because you have made the most high who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall us. <laughs> Nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. What? For he shall give his Melachim charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Well, 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 now you still ain't answering my question, man. That's that's conjecture. You still ain't told me, well, how somebody way, way over out, out there on the heaven, the furthest part, how they gonna be saved? Verse 12, in their hands, they shall bear you up. Right? Verse 11, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Not just one or two, but all. Relax, my aqua. It's going to be all right. My up. We already won. Wow. In their hands, they shall bear you up. At least you dash your foot against a stone. That's about it. Bam. Ow, that hurt. <laughs> oh, Miller King. Uh, uh, Dracon, look back. Look back. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. We got help. shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. <laughs> because he had set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. The Most High said, you have set your love upon me. Dawid, a man after the Most High's own heart, you have set your love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. <gasps> wow. You shall call upon me and I will answer drop nation. I will be with them in time of trouble and I will deliver them and honor them. And with long life, I will satisfy them. Who? Drop nation. And show them my salvation. Huh? Wow. So therefore, they will hear. The 
the vibration. Huh? <laughs> Let's go. Got that water. <laughs> hey, man. We got that water. Shout out to the bro. Nine Spiral, man. Keeping that water flowing. Enjoying the drop, drop chatter. Hey, how the tech, man. <laughs> We had such a great show, man. You know, we we still over here, man, popping off. The Shibata Show 2.0, man. Every Saturday night, 9.30 Pacific time. We just popping off, man. I mean, I, I got to get my voice back. <coughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, man, love to yourself, man. You know, <laughs> you got the primary mem sauce of the tech. Got the high vibes <laughs> on the high tide. Let's get it. <laughs> We popping off all night, man. Templar getting Mimi. <laughs> Templar still popping off, man. You know, Drop Chat is the place to be. Left to Sharp, man. I'll be I, Ezekiah. Uh, slow, slow, cool, man. All in the Drop Chat of Rob. <coughs> I'll get my voice. Rob Shalazar. <laughs> Big Hezekiah, man. Big Hezekiah popped up in here, man. You know, they on the they on the road, man. They, they making Naga moves. You know, that's all I can say, man. Wow, hey, Charmaine's guessing the correct answer. I think we gave out. I'm not even going to tell you, man, but, you know, we we popped off last night, man. <laughs> drop trivia, we popped off, man. Shout out to the drop trivia winners. Oh, man, for Nagaville, my night. Because every time you're in Nagaville, you reach another checkpoint, you know. Yeah, can you dig it? <laughs> yeah, all right, man. We out of here, man. We out of here. Uh, a couple things, man. First of all, for the 500, cold keeping Nagas. And yeah, we did it again, man. We did it again. We're popping off, man, continuously with maximum pop offness. And that's all I can really say about that. My Nagas is supporting steady, and I appreciate you. Everybody dropping and contributing for Joy World. Hit the link below to contribute to our fence. Help us build our fence. Blue, purple, red. White, linen, go thread, man. 500 code keeping knockers got us popping off, oh, man. Can we talk about these damn dams, man? And I'm just getting a, a popular theme. You know, it's a, it's a popular theme song here. It's almost like just follow the damn damn. Find you an ancient Naga city. I don't care what. City you in, Shala, <clears throat> what state you're in, where you at across the earth plane. It's kind of starting to look like just research dams and then cross reference that with, uh, I don't know, buried, flooded city, you know, city flood or something like that. You're going to find, you're going to find something, man. It's pretty interesting here uh, from the earthisland.org. Until last year, I had only witnessed the destruction of old Fingdu and photographs in the early stages. Only the blood red symbol, Sai, marked the buildings that would be torn down and submerged by China's massive Three Gorges Dam. which has turned the fierce waters of the Yanzi into a giant bathtub. So these buildings were submerged, buildings submerged by the water of this three Georgie and gorgeous day. Yeah. I stared at the shell of a high rise emerging from the flattened landscape dotted with men who were steadily chiseling away at the concrete edifice. So what's underneath these waters? I mean, what do we talk? China, you know, these damn dams like the Xi'an, Xi'an Wan Dam. <laughs> you know, they're trying to make a case for it, kind of going back and forth about the risk of these damn dams. Only about one third of the world's largest rivers remain free flowing. Anaga, that means two thirds of all the world's rivers have been damn damned. 
meaning they have not been damned or disrupted in man-made ways. Reports new lands, landmark study, while there are a few exceptions like Asia's 1,700 mile long Salween River, most of the remaining free-flowing rivers longer than 600 miles are now restricted to remote regions of the Arctic and to the Amazon and Congo basins. Look at the play on the board. They've taken away the free flow, right? That changes the currency, that changes the frequency because they're affecting the water and you are the water. So it affects you personally. And when you talk about rivers over 600 miles, they are restricted to remote regions now. Remote, my nigga, that means you're not there. <laughs> You ain't in that Amazon, you ain't in that Congo, and you damn sure ain't in the Arctic, huh? But all these rivers over 600 miles are now restricted to remote regions in the Arctic, Amazon, and Congo. We're talking remote. Naga less. But the Naga cities have been damned, damned, and disrupted. The flow has been damned, and the flow has been disrupted in man-made ways. Two thirds of the waters of the water. <laughs> Two thirds is now in prison. It is not free flowing. Yeah. Scientists warn that such fragmentization, fragmentation of the world's major rivers caused by mainly damn dams threatens the ecosystem services that both people and wildlife depend on for their survival free-flowing rivers they say provide food for hundreds of millions of people so when they took two-thirds of them away now they control the food now they control the water flow the energy that whatever's left is going to remote regions now man you think you're getting that in your store that water now you ain't getting that primary mem sauce left to yourself. The real you ain't getting that free flow. You ain't, you ain't getting that maximum pop offness, man. Hundreds of millions of people with these free flowing water, but they have now damned it up and disrupted it, man. I'm just talking China, but where's that, right? Where's China? It's a good question, man. There's a lot of dams, you know. It's a lot of damn dams, I'll tell you that much. It's a lot of damn dams, man. Let's just go back to the U.S., right? Overview of dams. There are over 91,000 damn dams. We just looked at a few connected to these Naga cities that have been sunken by these damn dams. We talked about Lake Lanier. We talked about Lake Martin. We recently talked Shiloh. And we're talking the uh, Shiloh Lake. Huh? Or the or the Full Hollow Lake now, you know, or reserves that are caused by damn dams flooding our cities, man. These damn dams, man. Okay. Dams are classified by hazard potential... What? The why put it up if it has a hazard potential, man? It's damned from the beginning. Damn if you do, damn if you don't, you know? But really, damn if you do. <laughs> a high hazard potential rating does not imply that a dam has an increased risk for failure. It simply means that if failure were to occur, the resulting consequence would likely be a direct loss of human life and extensive property damage. Oh, so you put one of these damn dams up and then you, you uh, make sure it's pointed right in the Naga's way, right? So you could have direct loss of human life and extensive property damage. Or you just sink an entire Naga city. Can't make this shit up, man. What happens, man, with these damn dams? What's underneath Lake Lanier? 
They say it's haunted now, huh? They say it's cursed now. Yeah, people still dying. People still saying it's cursed water. Cursed water, why is it so cursed, man? They're going to tell you the truth? Oh, it's over. Oh, it's a man-made. Remember the man-made situation? It's a man-made reservoir created in the 1950s to provide water, hydroelectricity, bubble. That's all their, uh, you know, talking points, right? Hydroelectricity sounds good. Oh, yeah, it's going to be better for who? Many families were displaced from the homes and many communities were flooded to make way for the lake. Many communities were flooded. Are you going to get into the who? This was uh, the uh, 1957 with the completion of the Buford Dam. So this damn dam by the Army Corps of Engineers made sure it flooded many communities to make way for the lake. So when you see these lakes, connect the dam and then connect the flooded Naga City beneath the water. And we can do some excellent recon together and break this shit wide open, man. Because they're just talking about many communities my Naga were flooded. I say, which one? Yeah. It's a simple question. A lot of y'all talking about Lake Mead. Yeah, we got to recon that further. There's Lake, you know, Connecticut joints. There's Colorado joints, California joints. Something about that Lake Lanier, though. You know. Hit a little differently, you know. Sometimes it just hit a little differently. Yeah, they got Cibola, Colorado. Let's talk Lanier, though, man. Let's talk Lanier. You see, I'm just talking sunken Naga history, right? We got Oscarville, right? Oscarville is no more. It's multitudes of cities and towns. You know, this is hundreds of acres of water you're talking about. Hundreds of acres of 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 new you know, little situations they're putting up looking like it's land around here, but the real land is under the water. Forsyth County, Georgia, a popular recreation spot now, I guess so, 52, 42 miles north of Atlanta, beneath, remember it just said many communities, right? Let's bring this over here, man. I can't make this up. Didn't that joint just say many communities, man, were sunk over here? Man, I got so much. I got I got so much going on with these damn dams. It's a reason why Naga popping off, man. It's a reason why all of us is popping off, man. Yeah, it says many families were displaced from their homes and many communities were flooded to make way for the lake. Which communities is many communities? Why, why didn't y'all tell us this? We're just talking Lake Lanier. It's built on the cemetery and it says many communities were flooded to make way for the lake. Completion in 1957 of the Buford Dam by the Army Corps of Engineers, Lake Lanier, built on a cemetery. Many communities were flooded. Love this, love the history of yesterday.com. Yeah, yeah, beneath is what used to be a town called Oscarville, right? We're just talking Lake Lanier, right? God, underneath this is a what? A thriving, <laughs> predominantly Negro community up until 1912 when they built this damn dam and they did this shit on purpose because uh these boys were accused of rape later the own uh rape victim her own family said these boys were innocent so accused is the key word because they were called innocent by the own family of the victim man but they didn't care. That's all they needed to pop off, right? So they killed all the black people in the surrounding area. That's why there's so many cemeteries. 
These ain't white people. These is Nagas, man. Until the community of Oscarville disappeared entirely. And you know what they did? They flooded it out. The white people, <laughs> straight up, the white people of Forsyth County flooded the area. Man. Can't make this stuff up, man. We're talking Naga communities destroyed by white supremacists, right? Now under the water. Whether you're talking Tulsa Massacre 1921, whether you're talking Oscarville, buried underneath Lake Lanier, on purpose, because these boys is accused, and the white people of Forsyth County flooded the area in 1956, creating a lake and covering the entire town of Oscarville underwater, where it remains to this day. And that's just one. So you connect one with these damn dams. I said, my nugget. You connect one with these damn dams. And, you know, what did it say to drop on the dams again? You get that right here. Back to meow.com. M-E-A-W-W. -W. Right. So many families were displaced from their homes. And many communities were flooded. The completion of the Buford Dam by the Corps of Engineers. So the Buford Dam, the Buford Dam is what these white people in Forsyth County use to flood Oscarville on purpose. And the list goes on and on. Alabama, you got Benson. We, we, we've been digging on, you know what I'm saying? The Benson, you know, father and son will be... Will Benson, 1926, the Martin Dam was used to flood out Benson, Alabama. Another Naga community, Henry McKee Islands, Gunnersville, Alabama, submerged beneath Lake Gunnersville, built on the, you know, when the Tennessee Valley Authority built Gunnersville Dam on the Tennessee River. There are unverified claims that homes and buildings were made but most were dismantled or moved when residents were relocated. Kyle Lige, Alabama, another, another thriving Naga community that is now under Lake Martin. You had a black college, man. You had a whole Nagaville University underneath Lake Martin. The first black railroad underneath Lake Martin and hundreds of homes. Yeah, then you got Central Park. You know, we've been talking about York Hill, Seneca Village, and all these other, you know, drops right here, man. So we just saying, man, it's not just here, it's everywhere. But now let's do a little mild calculation on infrastructure report card dot, dot, dot org <laughs> overview of the dams. And it says there are over, over 91,000 dams in the country that serve many purposes. Dams are classified by hazard potential and all that. So knowing that they can result to be a direct loss of human life and extensive property damage, they're letting you know the real play that the reason they build these damn dams, I mean, what's a, what's a dam? I mean, think about the words they use. Huh? What does it mean to be damned? Look at look look up damned in the definition <laughs> in the dictionary. So it results in a direct loss of human life and extensive property damage. That means that the entire town of Oscarville or York Hill or Seneca Village, Monaga or Guntersville, you did. <laughs> Kyle Elijah Benson and Oscarville are underwater, covering the entire town. That's these dams. Dams are a military weapon. You know why? Why we know? Because they're behind it all. Every time we're looking up these damn dams, it's extensive property damage of these damn dams. It keeps going back to who?
Let's get it right here at that. Same drop on Lake Lanier. Keeps going back to who? The Army Corps of Engineers. And all these are going to go back to pretty much the Army Corps of Engineers and, you know what I'm saying, the government, you know, building these things and this infrastructure with the ploy of hydroelectricity, <laughs> recreational opportunity. Uh, what? This, this man-made bullshit is going to give us some recreation opportunities, man. Come on, dude. We now have recreation opportunities, man. Look at us, man. Look at all these things we can do. Yeah, man. We can just pop off, you know? We can just pop off now. Man, we, we can get our recreation on. You know, ain't nothing... Nothing in the world now that can stop us from recreationing, you know. Putting Nagaville underwater with these damn dams gives them recreational opportunity, they say. Mormon town. <laughs> Mormon Island, located under Folsom Lake. Mormon Island was a gold rush mining town. That's another key word is this uh, mining situation. So whenever you're hearing mining town, just like the ghost towns, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, all around. You know, just like Dragon, uh, what's it, Dragon, Utah's a mining town, she like Now they're recreational opportunities, right? Trinity Center. Mines, Mincerville, and Stringtown. Located in Trinity County, these towns were flooded in 1963 after the creation of the Trinity Dam. So multiple towns flooded after these damn dams, right? Okay. I'm about to get to some great comments y'all left on the Shiloh dropping, you know, Go Cities dropping. You know, this is something I want to keep meditating on. Bidsworth Bar, this Butte. County mining town, so keyword mining town, dams, reservoirs and lake, flooded cities, cross reference all this stuff, you're gonna get all the drop. The Butte County mining town is now underneath Lake Oroville. Gold rush, gold rush, another keyword. Millerton was the first county seat of Fresno County before it was flooded in 1942. Nagaville underneath the water. Yeah, man. I mean, they said it's 91,000 damn dams. This is in Cali, Kennett, Baird, Copper City, Elmore, Adder, Morley, Pitt, and Winthrop are all under Lake Shasta because of this damn Shasta Dam in 1935. I don't think we can make this stuff, right? I mean, the list goes on. Another mining town, New Melones Lake in Calvers County. The lake was formed in 1982, so they've been doing it even recent. And it's the fourth largest man-made lake in California. Right. Yeah. Here we go. The United States Bureau of Reclamation ordered the construction of the multiple dams to create new bodies of water for storage in North Car North California. North California for storage, man. You buried all these cities for storage, man. I can't tell. I can't stomach this no more. I can't stomach this no more, man. <sighs> can't stomach this no more. We're talking about Naga cities. They call them ghost cities, right? And they give us these stories to make them make us afraid to go into them. That's why they call them ghost cities. Right? So now we're afraid to go into our own cities, right? <laughs> we're afraid to know what's under that water, right? Because it's a ghost lake. It's a ghost city. Ghosts is underwater. Ghosts are underwater. I guess our ancestors are ghosts. I guess our things are ghosts. Even China's going through it. 
So look up, you know, worldwide dams, dams, and it seems to be their play, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in China, whether you, you know, Russia, uh, India, whatever India, like, just look up on these damn dams. You know, this is 2010 dam, 958-foot-tall Shingawan dam. Yeah, it's going to bring power to cities. It's going to do all that. You know what it really did? What it really did, man? It disrupted and dammed up everything. Flooded out everything. You know, just recon what cities were, you know, uh, flooded out by this new damn dam in 2010. But it's letting you know straight up that all the free flow is gone. Two-thirds of the free flow. Gone, man. Ninety-one thousand dams in the country that serve any purposes. Ninety-one thousand dams. Hey, a lot of why, man. A lot of why. Because you know this is uh, it's just real personal. You know, it's it's. it's it's waking and knocking up in a whole different way, knowing that all our evidence is right in our face. All we got to do is recon the dams. And a lot of y'all been telling us this, man. Y'all been dropping some great drop. Dropping that drop nonstop. And I really appreciate you. We appreciate you. Drop Nation appreciates you. Hey, I to all my noggers digging on this drop. Sholow, Arizona. Shiloh. <laughs> Biblical Naga City, Drown Beneath Fools, Show Low Lake, talking about that Fools Hollow, Love to Delvina Irish, great, I mean, y'all have some great comments, for real, so it's safe to say that we, the children of the Most High, our lands have been, have either been flooded or turned into national parks, facts, lakes, churches, or beaches to hide our historical heritage or inheritance also it must be safe to say that folks or folks yeah folk talks about or were given to the, the descendants or us to stir us away from finding out bang it's like we just said ghost towns ghost cities stay away from that lake all the death is connected to it but it's also your stuff you know what i'm saying it's like someone saying oh well a massacre happened in your house so stay away from your house well you still got to investigate you still got to explore you you still got to make it right in your own house, right? All the glory to the Father for revealing this to Drop Nation. All honor to the Most High indeed. Hey, we give all praise to our framer and our shape. Allow why? Mutual thoughts processing, much respect. Just telling my lady yesterday that this will call, that we call America, sits on top of another place. These buildings are what we call concrete pavements were laid down to cover up a history that only exists here on this land. Peace, young king. Hey, peace to you, new antique gaming. Lay low said, I live mad close to this town. I've always wanted to go visit for some reason. People say it's beautiful and different from the rest of the state. Allow why lay low. Key, key alpha. Does this go hand in hand with the Atlantic flood? See, my brother's over there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I mean? Now your water's flowing, Kai. He keep the water flowing. I mean, what does it got to do with biblical flood stories when the biblical lands are being flooded right in your face like Shiloh, Sholo? And Shiloh, Sholo, man, they telling us that there's a town underneath that Shiloh, Sholo. You know, they, they letting us know straight up. You know, there's it, no confusion. <laughs> it's the, they put it right in our face, bro. You know, there's uh, some towns underneath this thing. You know, we, man, we, <laughs> we dug up on Shiloh Sholo. And you would never know, no. I mean, you can go to Sholo Lakes, you know, but they're going to give you a couple things. That there's two lakes, Full Hollows Lake Recreation. I'm talking Shiloh. <laughs> and you got Sholo Lake. Ka -ka. 100 acre lake sits on the elevation of 6,500 feet. What's under there, huh? Full Hollow Lake. They say this was 150-acre lake. But the whole area is 850 acres, man. Damn near 1,000 acres. 
and they're going to tell you to your face, bro, man, this recreational area was created by a private and public partnership in 1988 between the city of Sholo, Shiloh, U.S. Forest Service, Arizona Game and Fish, Arizona State Parks, and private entities. U.S. 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 It's a government operation. Construction started in the fall of 1991. And we're just talking Sholo. Just talking Sholo. Just keep going, my naga. That's all you gotta do. Located in the world's largest contiguous belt of ponderosa pine forest, a relatively flat basaltic plateau broken by Sholo Creek and Full Hollow Wash. Full Hollow Lake created by a construction of a damn dam. Right, same old thing. Same old people. Federal assistance to sink your Naga history. And then they made facilities like campgrounds and picnic areas <laughs> and everything else just to, you know, act like they were just doing some recreational things, but really this is military. This is takeover, man. I mean, in the most blatant type of way, you know. They got this place called uh, Adair, you know. <laughs> Adair. Sholo, this is the place, says Br Brigham Young. So here come the Mormons. They go to Shiloh, you know, Shiloh. Shiloh, Sholo, you know, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. You know. <laughs> Shiloh or Sholo, you know, Shiloh's an ancient city. We're talking ancient cities under the water. Brigham Young comes over there and says, yeah, this is the place. Then they set up shop. They start popping off. They end up building an LDS church and everything. Abandoned in 1906, Adair, huh? Oh, yeah, this town called Adair is now at the bottom of Full Hollow Lake. So over there in Shiloh, Sholo, Shiloh, there is a city they're calling Adair, right? At the bottom of that. Now, where's Shiloh? <laughs> you know, Shiloh, Sholo, we're just talking Arizona. We're just talking Arizona, are we? It gets deep, man. Now it gets deep. You got 91,000 dams. I mean, take your pick. You know, start playing around with this stuff. We started asking these questions. You know, what are the most, some of the most popular dams? You know, you got Theodore Roosevelt Dam, Roosevelt, Arizona. So another big dam in Arizona, Oroville Dam, talk about the California one, where they got Canyon and Copper City and all that. You got Hoover Dam, right? So all the stuff connected with that, the Grand Canyon flow, Grand Kalu, Kali. Almost sound like that Cooley, huh? Cooley Dam. Damn, damn, damn. They just put it right in our face. Grand Cooley Dam, man. You know what a Cooley is, man. Dwarf Shack Dam in Idaho. Orofino, Idaho, Fort Peck Dam, Glasgow, Montana, Glen Canyon Dam, Page, Arizona. All these are connected to sunken cities. It don't matter where you go. It don't matter where you go. Let's, man, man, let's check out Fort Peck. You know, we're just looking into some stuff. We're just asking some questions. Fort Peck Dam. Look, man, I'm doing it in real time. <laughs> Flooded city, you know, buried underwater. Any cities connected to this? Yeah, let's see.
the United States drowned towns. I mean, come on. <laughs> Go on and tell us something. I know they ain't saying they got T-Rexes under the water. How about the uh, Fort Peck? Honestly, all right. See, Fort Peck, my tan is getting interested already, man. I'm seeing dragons under the water. <laughs> Something about a red cloud being under the water. Man, some, some, some stuff under this water. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. You know I'm looking for the drop. Don't you oh snap me. Don't you damn near do it. Hijack City. Uh, see, we're getting too close. We're getting too close. We ain't supposed to be looking up these drowned towns in Montana. All right, man. All right. Okay. All right, let me back up. Let me back back. <laughs> Drop this popping off, man. Everybody know. Everybody know they hide something. Everybody know you hide something, man. The fight to save clean water on the Fort Peck Indian Reservation. Uh-huh. So here we go. They got the reservations. We're talking Idaho. Now, I wonder where the Nagas lived before they were pushed into some reservation. <clears throat> this drops all about clean water, man. Come on, man. Let's check out Fort Peck Lake, man. Rocky Mountains of Montana. Headwaters for some legendary, legendary rivers. Okay. The Missouri and Yellowstone rivers cut across the expanse of Great Plains in Montana. Flathead Lake is the largest natural freshwater lake west of the Mississippi River and the largest national lake in Montana. Fort Peck Lake is the fifth largest man-made lake in the United States. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know they got some drop on this one, boy, I tell you. It's the fifth largest man-made lake and the largest reservoir in Montana. 1% of the state is covered by water, which is about 1,600 miles, but it wasn't like that. So it's almost like they buried something about 1,600 miles long, right? Yeah, people moved into Montana at the end of the last ice age. All right, you want to go back 10,000 years? Because, yeah, we're just talking tribes. We're just talking tribes, man. And then they got the Lewis and Clark. They want to give us that background, man. I mean, what sites are on the water? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. They're talking about steamboats called Red Cloud, wrecked. Became known as the Red Cloud Bend. The river channel shifted over time. Blah, blah, blah. Come on, man. Montana's reservoirs contain other sites, too, like ruins of prehistoric and historic sites. Stop it, man. I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here, man. So you're going to tell us to our face that beneath this water, you created with this damn dam. There's prehistoric and historic sites that became inundated when re reservoirs were filled with water. Oops, sorry. We accidentally flooded prehistoric and historic sites. Libby's L-I-B-B-Y reservoirs, Lake Kuhn Khan, <laughs> Ku Khan, Usa, all right. <laughs> for example, contains a diverse range of sites from Paleo Indian. What's a Paleo Indian, Managi? A diverse range of historic sites is underneath this reservoir. In Idaho, I just told you, just pick one damn and start researching. I'm doing this in real time. That's why I'm popping off. From Paleo Indian to modern times, including the original town of Rexford. Got him. So underneath Rexford, or excuse me, underneath this Montana Reservoir, what do we call it? We just recon this. <laughs> going crazy, man. Drop is going cray cray. I just randomly chose Fort Peck, right? And underneath this, you're telling us, you telling us, underneath this, 
is what? What they say? What's underwater? The town of Rexford. The town of Rexford was buried by Fort Peck Dam and many other prehistoric and historic sites. You could do the same with each and every one of these dams. Find the city, find the Naga city buried beneath the water. Because remember, there's over 91,000 dams in the country. Israel Sharp, Hopewell, Ohio, that serpent mound, that water been heavy this way. Yeah, something, something special about that serpent, that dragon mound in Ohio. Arizona, Nazareth, observatories all over the world aimed in scoping out Arizona. Shout out to Joe Doc. Let's go. Templar popping off. Shiloh, Sholo, Shiloh, or Shilo, or Key law, key law, key law, she law, she law, <laughs> she, she, she law, say law, call law, sha law, sha law, hey, love to the tip, man, he popping off, man. Christy Buzzy says, yep, Lake Lanier was filled from the Beaufort Dam to cover over Oscarville, Georgia. Takum Say said, funny, I was just reading an article about how they dropped beavers from aircraft via parachute. Oh, now they really damning. I mean, <laughs> that's that remote damn damn. I mean, you talk about missions. Man, that's Operation Beaver Dam for real, man. Love to tech. Hey, testimony, 1971. So I moved to Arizona in 96, and I promised kind of felt like it was home. I had a drive and hunger for growth I could not understand. Now Hawaii got me in Michigan, and... I miss Arizona in a spiritual way. I'll praise the most high. Thank you, Khan. May Hawaii Baruch you, your, your ween and y'all seed forevermore. So be it. Oh, he's talking about my queen. Okay, I got it. <laughs> So be it. Let it be. Hey, I have testimony. 1971 for that testimony. Eh, Ahmad Ali says, America is the true old world. Move, discover. All right, that's a great document by Amun Hoptep. Chavez El Bay, all right. He says, powerful. My noggins, y'all let me know what you got on that. Dig it up, man. Hey, hop to Ahmed Ali. JB, so you got him a German Shepherd, a Shiloh Shepherd to be exact, not as big as the King Shepherd, but close. Always wanted to know where the name came from. Hawaii, <laughs> blessings, Baruch, Baruch. Hey, hey hi, my noggin, JB. Quentin McKell McClendon, LOL, and the so-called Indian Reservation in Orville, it's called More Town. Oh, man. It's a more on more war. But we're going to dismount with this more and more war, man. <laughs> uh, Zodan says, wait till y'all find out how meth heads been going underwater scavenging for your artifacts, man. That's Hijack City. Hey, hey Hop Zone. Mac Mac says, Mac it says, bro, this continues to be so hard to hear. And this is real spill for all of us. Something about these underwater cities, Lake Lanier and Oscarville and Benson's and all this and everything else that we're, well, it's, it's, it's stirring something up in us, man. Like, you know, we, we popping off, you know, this is a huge investigation and no one's talking about rarely, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a hi to the sister Amber Ruffin just for pulling our coat just to make that awareness pop off. It says, bro, this continues to be so hard to hear. It's kind of st the kind of stuff we got to listen to in reverence with the towel on our chest bone these are our fallen soldiers and now they demonize their confederate flag with lies i mean ain't shiloh sholo on the confederate on the shikamago flag come on man shiloh shikamago you got it y'all don't i can't spell shikamago but you know what i'm saying Huh? Yeah, man. Can't make this stuff up, man. They're putting Shiloh right on the flag, right?
That's that Shikamagua. This the one with the Shiloh on it, Kai. Huh? All right, so you see the Shiloh on top. You got Blackland, Shikamagua. Can't see this whole thing. Rocky, Rocky face, something like that. <laughs> so, hey, man, this is what they're going to war in with our towel. And Shiloh right here. Why would it be? I mean, Shikamagua, all this connects to tribal land and tribal Nagas. Why wouldn't this Shiloh here? And that's when we started being like, yo, you talking Sholo? Is you talking Sholo? <laughs> got um, because in Sholo we got underwater cities, you know. Yeah, the Mormons rode up on Sholo tough, you know. What did uh, Brigham Young say about it, man? This is the spot. <laughs> he said, hey, man, this is the spot. I mean, they got petroglyphs in Sholo. They got petroglyphs in Sholo. Sholo popping off for real, for real. Hey, Sholo ain't no joke, man. Sholo got their own little history and stuff. <laughs> got like job crazy. For real, for real, man. You know, Joseph uh, Brigham Young wrote up in Sholo. He said, man, this is the spot. I wouldn't want to be nowhere else, man. What did he say? This is the place, said Brigham Young. This is the spot. <laughs> spot for what, Brigham Young? We just talking Sholo. Why you acting like we crazy? Why we got to be crazy when we just talk Sholo? That's all we saying, man. Yeah, it's on the flag, though. You know, Shiloh Sholo is on the flag. Love to Matt Matt. They demonized their Confederate flag with lies, using us to do so in the ignorance, in our ignorance, shaking my head, very humbling and heartbreaking. May Hawa and our ancestors pardon us, just like we are restoring Mama to her rightful place. So must we restore with us enough respect the struggle and dignity of our ancestors to come say Hosea three and five blue purple red white linen go thread y'all been seeing the blue purple red and you know you always see it from right to left just like the Hebrew you know everything's in reverse from the English spell so you know we always start from right to left blue purple red from right to left White linen go thread, kind, kind of love to Mac Mac, you know, bringing us back, back. Like, hello, why? Yeah. It's all happening, man. Why is Shiloh on the flag? You know, people find a lot of things. People find a lot of stuff when we talk ghost towns, everything that's in the water. You know, people are finding a lot of things, man. You know, up to uh, Five Eyes Ma. <laughs> Over here, you know, popping off the IG flow. You know, get on IG, man. We, we love, you know, featuring my Nagas products and, you know, dropping that drop in between and all that stuff. Yeah, man. Uh, Ma dropped this right here. It says 500 abandoned Disney S castles found inside of a ghost town. Now I can't make this stuff up, man. Five hundred castles in a ghost town. Five hundred castles in a ghost town. Now this is in Turkey, and you might be like, "Oh, that's way over there. That's in Turkey. That got nothing to do with me." What does that got to do with me? What does Turkey got to do with a Naga? My, my Naga, first of all, just meditate on the fact. <sighs> meditate on the fact that there's a whole town full of castles. Now, they're going to also say it's some new, new thing that was started and not finished. And different product projects. Hey, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but it is a sight to behold. <laughs> it is a sight to behold. <laughs> hey, everything's pointy around here, man. Uh, somebody said it looked like a KKK rally. 
<laughs> like a bunch of KKK dudes, uh, Klansmen with sheep with the sheets and pointed hats all over the place, man. Yeah, man. Hey, everything pointy over here in the Byzantine. We're talking turkey. And that got me thinking about the Byzantine again. Hey, love the Five Eyes mom, man. That's a very interesting drop popping off. Got me thinking about the Byzantine. You know, remember this drop? Before you say, oh, it's turkey, it has nothing to do with me. It's just, just, just rock with a naga, you know, just rock. For the dismount, my naga. I got to, you know, I got to get the daddy daycare, man. You know, I got things happening. I got a lot of stuff to do, my naga. You know, I got things happening, man. I heard the founder of the Cappadocians. In the early 5th century, a Cappadocian scholar wrote an extensive ecclesiastical history that served the developments of the previous century. In his homeland, Philostrosius had grown up in the shadows of the great Cappadocian fathers. Despite their prominence, Philostrosius did not embrace their version of orthodox theology. Instead, he and his family accepted the doctrines of Eunomius, another Cappadocian the theologian, whom Basil and Gregory of Nisa would personally discredit and vilify, nor did Philostrosius remain in Cappadocia since eventually he moved to Constantinople. In his ecclesiastical history, Philostrosius was hence both ecumenical and local. He included many tidbits of odd information about biblical events and the Roman Empire, and he was interested in legends about Cappadocia when he mentioned Mazaka, M-A-Z-A-C-A, -A. listen up, for the dismount, when we talk turkey, are we talking you or them? Let's go. When he mentioned Mazaka, the original name for the city that would eventually become Kazaria, he noted that this name was derived from Mosak, M-O-S-O-C-H, the founder of the Cappadocians. Now we're putting our chronology together. We're seeing how this Moshe connection connects with this Mosak. And it sounds a lot like Moshe the more we read it, and you're connecting the real Khazar. Not the later Caesar, but the actual Khazar. You know, you're, you're connecting the original Byzantine. Remember, the Byzantine Empire fell after the Papal Bull 1452 and 1453. One year later after the Papal Bull, doomed our verses saying subjugate all the Nagas, <laughs> all the Ibaru. The Byzantine falls the next year. So this was a direct hit from this new world situation popping off, from this new power popping off the and the Pap the Papal Bulldog, you know. Mosak got hit first, right? Mosok, the founder of the Cappadocian. Mosok's name suggests some sort of Shemitic derivation. We're talking Shem in Turkey, in the Byzantine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're just talking Turkey. Hey, can Anaga talk Turkey? Y'all mind if Anaga talk Turkey? <laughs> this is a map of Turkey, 979 AD, right? This is a map of Turkey, huh? So the Byzantine plays heavy when we talk Turkey. Just so you know, just so you know, the founder of the Cappadocian. So Mosok's name suggests some sort of Semitic derivation, and his reputation as the founder of the Cappadocians seems to hint at a foundation legend for the region that was older than the adoption of Greek myth. Whoa. So what is the foundation that Mosok brought that got flooded out or completely uprooted one year after the Papal Bull, 1452, in the early Roman Empire outside Cappadocia, had heard of Mosok too. The Jewish historian Josephus even tried to fit him into biblical genealogy. So you know we're not talking someone outside the script. His name suggests Shem, Shemitic derivation even josephus tried to fit him into biblical genealogies but of course he was hijacking him too by equating him with meshek one of one of the grandsons of noah but they threw him under jpeh when he's really what has a shemetic derivation <laughs> they're trying to still play the okie dog with moses man 
<laughs> the tribes of Moses, the Preston. Although Mosak is an intriguing primal ancestor. That means it has everything to do with the primal Naga. What primal ancestor has something to do with any other, you know, uh, group outside of the prime Nagas? He unfortunately remains obscure. Philostrogers, in fact, knew so little about the legend that he could not match the consonants and vowels in order to make sense of the postulated link between the city's name of Mazaka and Mosak's name. He couldn't even put it together. So he say, so he made a makeshift phonetic transfer. He shrugged and invented a makeshift phonetic transfer. So he swerved Mosak into Mazaka to hide Moses. After the passage of time, the city was called Mazaka through a swerving. <laughs> In the latter Roman Empire, all that survived of whatever legends there may have been about Moses or Mosak were his name, his reputation, and his enigmatic connection with the name of the city. And we know that it's Moses because Mosak's name doesn't have no reputation. But Moses' name has a great reputation. <laughs> and there's a connection with the city. The myth of the Mosak, the founder, was a lost memory, a fragment of the abandoned past, a casualty of the adoption of Greek mythology, the imposition of Roman rule, hijack city, or the expansion of Christianity, hijack city, in a society that defined itself in terms of Greekness, Romanness, or Christianity, Hijack city, Moses, Mosach, the founder, has become meaningless. Don't tell me Turkey don't play. Don't say, oh, this is Turkey. Nah, my knock, hey. My knock is popping off. Say, hey. I say, anybody else trying to pull up? Oh, man. Hey, hot poetry. Man, everybody in there. Hiram X. I'm going. You're on Huron 9. I'm going, man. <laughs> Looks like KKK. Yeah, man. I guess it do. I guess it do. Because everything's pointy. Everything pointy, man. <laughs> Let's go. He said, get artists to move in and redesign them more effective. Well, it is a more on more war. I'm glad you brought. I, I'm, see, I didn't bring it up. They like to slide it in. But, you know, what it have to do with the. You know, with the Byzantine, you know, because something about the Papal Bulldog, man, you know, I mean, it preceded this, uh, you know, Charles V, Estebanico takeover, you know, so something real fishy, something, something, something real, something real stank going on with this 1452 Papal Bull, you know, <laughs> they get the drop. That's all I can say. That's all we could say is get the drop. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all happening. I ain't even going to click on it. I'm just going to say it's all happening. Right in your face, bro. Right in your face, bro, man. Matter of fact, my noggin, watch this. Let's just, just check this out. For, for the disc, man. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to get it on IG, man. I mean, unless I can make this real small. Real small. Maybe it'll work like this. Right in our face, Bo, man. You know, shout out to Alawa Kimi, man. Appreciate you. So this was Indian Joe's territory, right? This was all Nagaville, right? This was all the Preston's territory. Now they took it away. And where did they hide it? Where did they hide Indian Joe's stuff? <laughs> right 
in your face bone. So they built on top of it and they hid it underwater with lakes and reservoirs. They hid the Naga cities. Who was behind it, right? Army Corps of Engineers, the Army, 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 the federal assistance, the, the government was behind these 91,000 dams, man. And so America became the great nation she is today, thanks to brave men like these. I know something I won't tell. I won't tell. I won't tell. I know something I won't tell. What you know? And look at this copper color Naga. He's as copper as copper get, right? Let's go. Ah, well, it's just that engine. Joe is a, a, a ticklish. <laughs> So they done tickled a Naga right off the cliff, Bo, right? <laughs> they done tickled a Naga to death right off the cliff, Bo, right? And took up all his land. Shout out to Allah Wal Kimi. Let's go. Or Allah Wa Allah Alchemy. I think it's Allah Alchemy. All right, let's go. Hey, I appreciate you, family, man. I appreciate you. The original town of Rexford, which has Paleo Indian, Indian Engine Joe, covered up by the Libby Reservoir, Lake Kukanusa. We're talking Montana's reservoirs. We're talking the sites that are underwater, like towns, cities, or prehistoric and historic sites. Diverse range of sites from Paleo Indian to modern times, including the original town of Rexford. Historic sites under water. Yeah. I mean, when it's real, it's real. You know? Most like the founder. Byzantine Turkey. The Byzantine taken out one year after the Papa Bull. The Byzantine. Yeah. It survived the fragmentation and the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century AD and continued to exist for an additional thousand years until it fell to the Ottoman Empire in 1453. Ottoman Empire. So these Byzantine fell to the Ottoman who? Papal Bulldogs to take out all y'all. Ravishing mammals issue Vatican Papals, tricking Adam and Eve to bite that Vatican apple. Pope Nicholas V issued this Papal Bull June 18, 1453. Now it says to reduce any Saracens, they put in Muslims, but it says Saracens, right? We have, you know, what a Saracen look like, even on the Andrew's crest. These are not Europeans in, uh, uh, you know, these are not Europeans, my naga, over there. These are Americans, you know what I'm saying? These are Marukans that are stationed in all these vortexes and areas, you know, 
because you see uh, so-called black nobility, that doesn't mean that they're European. You did. They're holding down Russia. They're holding down the ancient vortexes and everything in between. They're coming from somewhere. They're not just being born in Russia. <laughs> by Naga. But they ain't coming from Africa either. They're coming from the old world. Coming from the ancient world. Singing the ancient love song. And all you need to know is that someone came weighing all in singular the premises with due meditation. And what did they do? They got granted permission, free and ample faculty to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Negroes, right? But it's not just like white against black, right? Because Charles V also used this, right? Black ass King Charles, right? It's a more on more war. I'm glad the family said, you know, uh, something about making something more, you know, <laughs> more accessible like these ghost cities. Because this wouldn't have happened without the violation of the Moor or the Moab or the Amman, you know, or the um, Amalekites, you know what I'm saying, or any of these more ishes. We stick with the greats. If you talk more to us, you got to be talking great. And it gets no greater than Hawa and the children of Hawa. So the real greats are in code with Hawa, are the tribes that are being raised and redeemed from Hawa that have been vanquished, captured, searched out, invaded, and subdued by all these enemies of their Christ. And we're smart enough to know that their Christ is their... Muhammad is their Buddha is all their bullshit, all wrapped into one. And all of it is putting a power before or beside our power. All of it is flooding our history, flooding our ancient love song, our promised land, our latitude and longitude with your treaties, with your Moorish treaties, man, with your pieces and friendship, man. You fought against the Kum say. If you was on the other side of that, man, you were on the other side of the more and more war to this day because you still covering it up. And until you be real with you, then we got to be us. You want to be one with us, you got to be real with you. You're going to have to eat what you've done. Not just admit it, you're going to have to eat that shit, man. Subduing all of us, taking captive of all these Nagas after 1452. The Byzantine Empire existed for thousands of years until it fell to the Ottoman. Who's that? In 1453. Yeah, I told you. We're making one hell of a dismount because this is some real darkness we're talking about. Some real hell we got to talk about yeah man when ottoman empire threatened europe oh this is perfect timing because they want to pick it up in 1573 but something just popped off in 1452 and in 1453 but look how they connected to mexico just like that isn't that a weird conversation i'll show you a picture of a ghost city full of castles in Turkey. You say, that's not ours. That belongs to the Turks. Well, who the fuck are the Turks? And why is it a ghost city? Coming down to the Byzantine Pacific shore. And just because they in Turk don't mean that they running Byzantium. That's why they put the Doom Diverses up. Because there was somebody before this version of Turks, and it was Mossack, the founder, before he became meaningless. He became a lost memory, a fragment of your abandoned past. Sounds like ghost talk. Sounds like ghost towns and ghost cities. Adopt. This was before the adoption of what? Greek mythology. Now they have the Atlantean mythology, but we're still talking about buried Naga cities underwater. 
Mosok is the primal ancestor. We're talking Byzantine, right? The city's name switched to Mazaka through a swerving. Before it was Mosok or Moses, then it became Mazaka, then it became what? Cappadocia or Khazaria, all these things after it was first. Mosak, the founder, the primal ancestor. We talking Turkey? <laughs> Managa, we talk Turkey? Oh, we talk Turkey very well. For the dismount coming down to Mexico specific shore. This is from the New York Times. <laughs> One summer day, 1573, a merchant named Pero Jimenez saw something remarkable ships he told spanish colonial officials of turks or more or moors so we can't talk turk without talking more we can't talk ottoman we got without talking more my night and you got that muck muck drop it's just one and the same these are dark skinned copper colored nagas in turkey including the Byzantine. but those are hebrews under mosak and that's why these Moors signed up with the Papa Bull. They weren't, the Papa Bull wasn't against them. They were the ones putting it into play to roll up on the Byzantine, to roll up on Moses, Mosak in 1453. Damn, damn, dams, man. I wonder who's behind all these damn dams there. They behind the 1453 and the P treaties of peace of friendships, 17, what, 78 and all that. Right on the head bone of Dragon Canoe and the Shikamagua, Cherokee. Right on the head bone of Tecumseh. They've been on the wrong side the whole damn time. 1573, 1453, 1778, whatever we're talking about. Biblical times. <laughs> Joshua and them. They're calling Joshua, Joshua the robber. Who's robbing? Who's been? Who's been robbing? Because you want more longitude and you want more latitude. You want cat that. You want the promised land. But you're not the Pomegranaga. You're not the Red Mind. You'll never be the real Roman. Because you're not connected with the real Pomegranate. You ain't got that pure water flowing to connect to the true pomegranate. So you can moor it up if you want to, but at the end of the day, you're just more ish The real great don't need to roll up on another great. You know what I'm saying? A real great is great in their heart bone. It's great in their connection with the creator. A real great don't got to create false idols to duplicate the relationship that the children of Hashira have with our Hawa. Yeah, Turks or more, surely there was some mistake, surely. But just weeks later, a report came of seven vassals of the great Turk, all men of the sea, the spies of the princes, walking as bold as brass around the plaza of the town of purification sent to investigate Spain's crown agent concluded that Turks or Moors Ottoman, right? Ottoman? Huh? 1453? 1452? 1453? Years later, this Byzantine falls to the Ottoman, huh? Ottoman who? Yeah, you're just talking Turks, right? Huh? Right. Crescent, you know, same same symbol with the Moorish today, right? Ottoman, same symbol, right? All right. Can't make this shit up. Same symbol as the, as the Mohammedan tribes, the old tribes of Muhammad, right? Got you. Okay. Turks or Moors, right, that took out the Byzantine. Who's the Byzantine? Mosok, the founder, right? <laughs> That's all we're talking about with the Byzantine, with Khazaria and Cappadocia, right? We're talking the Byzantine, my naga. 
And this is where it all popped off. This is one of the main, you know, talk the Russians, the Roos, Clan Ross. You're talking Byzantine drop. I'm going to leave this for you, man. <laughs> the original name of the city had been Mazaka, somehow derived from the name of Mosak, the founder, right? <sighs> yeah, we all up in the flow now, man. We all up in that 1452, the takedown of 1453. By who? Turks or Moors, right? So the Moors are who took out Mosak and them. The Moors are who took out the Byzantine one year after the Papal Bull. And they were plotting with whew, Native Americans to overthrow what they're calling Christian rule. <laughs> but remember, they were calling Prester John a Christian ruler. But then they said in the story, so we're we talking code word for the Hebrews. And that these other Native Americans, I don't know, like the ones that fought against the Kumse, should we get that again? The ones that fought against the Kumse teamed up with the Moors to overthrow who? To Kumse and the Hebrew, who they're calling Christian, under the presto of the Grand Khan. Let's go. What sounds foolish today, Turks invading Mexico. Moors invading Mexico. What? Moors invading Mexico. Mexico is Mexica. Mexica is Meshe, Moses. So whether you're talking Mazaka, Mosak, or Mexica, or Mexica, you're still talking Moses. So, yes, it's this. it doesn't sound foolish when you put it together with a dragonfly perspective because we see clearly that the same Turks or Ottomans that invaded the Byzantine or Mazaka or Moses in 1453, one year after the Papu Bu Doom Versus 1452, the same Moors that took out uh, the Ottoman, or excuse me, the Byzantine, the same Ottoman Moor, right? It's the same one that also invades Moses over here, right? Mexica, Mazaka, Mosak over here. So these are all the same connection. Cons did not seem so in 1573 when Spaniards sailed the 13,000 miles of Cadiz to Java. They found Muslims all along the way. Yeah, they've been here. This is Moab. This is the land of Shem, right? It's the land of Shem. They've been here, right? Was it really so silly to suspect that Islam had crossed the Pacific too? It's interesting though because they say Esteban was the first Moor <laughs> coming over here, you know hijacking the Nagas, who was later crucified. <laughs> he became their Christ. He became their anointed, Stephen the Christ. Same birthday as Jesus. Same veneration day as Jesus. Esteban, child of the sun, is their Christ coming in. But they say he was the first non-native coming in that particular country of Hawiku or New Mexico. But it doesn't mean that there wasn't some uh, already posted along the way. But today we know that the only Muslims in the Americas were the West African slaves that have been imported since 1501. Yeah, well, we're talking the West African Hebrews or what, you know. But the conquistadors were never the same. Hernan Cortez claimed to have seen over 400 mosques while making war on the Aztecs. And God shadow Alan Milkhel a leading historian of Ottoman Turkey makes two claims. The first and less controversial is that 16th century Christians saw everything, including the Americas, through the lens of their struggle against Islam when Columbus crossed the Atlantic in 1492, the very year that Spain's rulers destroyed Iberia's last Muslim kingdom. He assured his royal patrons that his voyages were merely continuations of their anti-Islamic crusade. His aim in getting to Asia was to find the Mongol Grand Khan. Hey, I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here, baby. They say they want to get to Asia. I ask you, where's Asia? Orientis finds map, 1531. I see South America. I see where Mexico would be. But you see Cathay. You see Florida, Managa, all this is... Asia, 
Do you see a North America? No, you see a uh, Asia. We're talking 1500s. So when they're talking Asia in the 1500s, you got to look at what the maps look like in the 1500s. Huh? They're talking 1492. They're talking 15th, 16th century. You got to know what the maps look like in the 15th, 16th century. When they talk Asia, you got to know where Asia's at. You see America labeled America, but it's only so-called South America today. But it didn't say South, right? This is America. This is America. This is America. This is Asia now called North America. This is all the engine, engine Joe territory, right? <laughs> this is all Presta territory. This is India superior. They call it North America now. It's just Asia, Florida, Cathay, let's go. His aim in getting to Asia was finding the Mongol Grand Khan <laughs> and talk him into a greater prince or attack on Jerusalem. Oh, yeah, because they didn't want the longitude and latitude. And maybe by then, the more ish had already taken a big chunk. You know what I mean? Who knows? But they said, well, maybe the Khan's going to want to get the, get his stuff back. Maybe he want to get his things back. Nah, he knew maybe they wanted to just hijack him in Asia. It's a more on more war. And we're just getting started, my noggin, because we know that they are just now tuning in. It's been that way. It's been a takedown, right? Because they came and got the what? The kingdoms, the dukedoms, the principalities, the dominions, the possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed. And they reduced us to perpetual, that means forever, perpetual slavery, and they apply to themselves our kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and converted them to his or their use and profit. Because now they possess these islands, America, these lands, America, these harbors, America, these seas, and then now they make their own man-made seas to cover up history, Naga story, because now it belongs to them and their successors, right? We're just talking America. The copper color cons found here. The definition of an American in 1828. It belongs to Alfonso and them and his success is the hijack and their success is American, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper color tribes found here, not brought here, found here by the Europeans, but now apply to the descendants of Europeans born in America. Successors, right? We're just talking successors. Descendants successors 1452 next year the ottoman turk or more <laughs> takes out the Byzantine or the primal ancestor man you know it's mossad now you're talking primal now you're talking an intriguing primal ancestor he unfortunately remains completely obscure because he was covered up in the water. <laughs> now he's underneath the water like everything else, right? Hey, man. Now he's underneath the water like everything else. Submerged. Underneath the water with all these dams and reservoirs. Nagaville submerged. Nagaville submerged like everything else. Okay, Allah, Wah, 
Get up in the drop, drop, chatter, chat to chat, chatter. We popping off to they just now tuning in. Hey, make sure you download the app for free and get up in here. You know, tell us how you feel. The website's still going through a transition. So, hey, hop to the real ones, man, for checking in and drop chat. Just checking in on us. We will begin updates again real soon and get everything flowing bigger and better. Hey, hop to the real ones, man. Surfing that wave, man. <laughs> for the fire of the code keepers, get this work right here. Get this work right here. Get this work right here. <laughs> Love to is this. Has anyone looked up the history of Lake Me? Man, I mean, I think I think we got the Lake Mead on tap, on tippity tap tap. Somewhere around here, man. You ain't say nothing but a word. Yeah. And you know, we know a lot of these lakes are drying up too. You know, that's another thing to keep you know, uh, an eye on. But, yeah, we got this le this legendsofamerica.com. And the bro just came in and dropped this, too. Like, he literally just dropped this as I'm dropping this drop. So when I say surfing the wave and that this is a group effort, the bro just dropped this, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Legendsofamerica.com, Lake Mead Ghost, the ghost of Lake Mead. Yeah, man. What is beneath Lake Mead, man? Yeah, a lot of coolies and coolages <laughs> authorized to build the Hoover Dam, 1928. Same thing, provide hydroelectricity, water, and recreation. Da, 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 da. 140 miles of shoreline split between Lake Mead and Lake Mojave. It was first called the Boulder Dam Recreation, 1936. Everything was covered up, including a Pueblo city, the lost city, covered up. That's gone. Yep. 19 or 1827, Jedediah Smith found various artifacts while exploring the area. Many years later, more people came into the site, but little interest show, was shown until over 10 Nevada residents stumbled across the ruins. It was first excavated by archaeologists, 1924 who found walls, tools, <laughs> weapons, and even skeletal remains, bodies on bodies in Kalelus. They looking up lost cities, Managa. They found a Pueblo structure, Managa, that consisted of 20 to 100 rooms. <sighs> yeah, I mean, we're digging on Lake Me. That connects a lot to this Hoover Dam. Damn, man. Hey, we surfing the wave in real time. Shout out to Izish <laughs> for that drop. A hey, hot to my Naga Moon Boy, man. We with you, my Naga Moon Boy. A hey, hop to all my Nagas behind the wall. We are with you. You know what I'm saying? Hijack City is real, but the Nagas, hey, we on Kum Kum. We rising and we ain't going to stop because the drop don't stop. And the water continues, man. All my Nagas keep on Kum. Keep putting it together. Keep making great choices. Make sure you got all the preparation you need. But first, make sure you got all the code you need. And then you in order, man. And when you can do that, you can look each other in the eye. And you can say, stay up, suit up, and choose up. Allow, hawa. Hey, hit that link below. Support Joy World. Help us build a fence on an acre of land. And you all, because you all means high. And it's time to coon, it's time to rise, Shalom to the tribe.